British Film Institute National Film and Television Archive is just a short train ride from Euston Station in London. Byrony Dixon, the silent film curator for the BFI, invited me for a tour to learn of the work they do to preserve our cinematic heritage. My name is Bryony Dixon and I'm a curator at the BFI National Archive which is where we are here and we're in Berkhamsted just outside London and this is the conservation centre for the BFI National Archive. Uh, the BFI, um, our parent organisation, was set up in the 30s and it's got uh, a cinema, it's the, the national body for film in the UK. Uh, so we're a bit the equivalent of something like the Library of Congress in the States or the Cinémathèque Française in France. Um, we have a large collection here uh, of films uh, that cover all aspects of cinema, going right back to the 1890s. Uh, we also uh, archive television on behalf of the national broadcasters in the UK. So that's the, the BBC, Channel 4, Channel 5. Uh, and we have been around for long enough to accumulate a very large collection indeed. So despite being a small country with a small uh, kind of film collection or output, we've actually got this very large collection. So it's both British film and a huge collection of international film, uh, mainly from Europe and the States. So what we're going to do is we're going to go on a little tour of the uh, conservation centre here at Berkhamsted. So we're going to look at some of the, uh, the film side, so the conservation preservation work of the archive here. And we're going to look at you know, the printing and processing and, and some of the storage. Not all our films are kept here, uh, in fact some of our films, most of them in fact now, the master film collection is kept in an, on another site in Gaydon in Warwickshire, which is uh, some miles away, in a brand new sub-zero vault, which is very exciting. And um, so that will bring the temperature of the films down to minus four, minus five degrees, which means that we hope it will last for hundreds of years. So we're just going into uh, one of the acetate vaults. There we go. Oh my gosh. So this is the principally the viewing collection of the National Film Archive. Sorry, the BFI National Archive. This is principally safety film. Yeah, it's all safety, um, and it is mainly. Uh, the viewable material. So these over here, for example, are prints that cinemas run. Lolita. So this is about um, four or five degrees, nice and cool, 35, more or less. Um, humidity. So dry and cool, which is what you want for your films. Right. I'm seeing some familiar titles up here. Yeah. Where we Sherlock Holmes, Dying Detectives. That's a Titanic film, that German Titanic film. Uh, so this is one of three of these big vaults. One of three? Yeah, most of the um, other big vault is television. So we've got, I mean, a lot of these are feature films, um, but there'll be documentary as well. So there'll be newsreel, documentary, all sorts in this vault. All the different genre? Yeah, yeah. Great. Okay. Good. Thank you, that's great, very impressive. Um, and this is the debris printer here, is the main one we use for wet gate printing. You can see that's where the tank will be with the fluid. 
so that the film will pass through so your neg or whatever will pass through a tank of fluid and that will eliminate the surface scratches. Um, so what we do these days is a kind of combination of digital and film copying. People think that digital is replacing film, it isn't, it's just more. It's another tool that you use. So sometimes it's better to go through a wet gate printer and produce another piece of celluloid. Sometimes it's better to scan. And sometimes it's better to wet scan. And sometimes it's better to dry scan. People think, oh, wet gate is uh, some kind of automatic panacea solution. But it isn't. Um, dry scanning can be better than wet scanning because you get better resolution. So dry scanning can give you more precise resolution. Uh, wet scanning eliminates more scratches but gives you a softer image. So there's always pros and cons with everything that you do in the film world and in the digital world. So you need all of these things. So you need optical printers, step printers, everything. For, and we use all of these things and um, we have people who are extremely experienced who've been here forever and ever who know exactly what they're doing with this stuff which is fantastic. Um, you can see there uh, we keep um, samples of, of tinted film because we do quite a lot of silent film work mm -hmm. so we keep examples um, of um, coloured film with, with different tints so that we can compare them and, and get them absolutely right. What we don't want to get into is, because this is now more or less a digital process, the tinting, what we don't want is for people to say we've colourised something. Right. Because as you probably know, colourising has a very bad reputation yes. um, because people used to colourise black and white film yeah. that had never been in colour. However, 80% of silent films were actually coloured in one way or another. So um, we take a lot of time to analyse exactly these tints. So um, in here, uh, we are processing film. Um, as I say, in the old days when we were copying nitrate all the time as a kind of routine matter. These were, it was like a, a, a factory, and there were billions of people here working away. Um, now it's much more occasional, so it feels more empty, but on the other hand, it means you can really focus on what you're doing. You've seen these before, I'm guessing. These are, you know, um, just straightforward processing machines. Are you processing nitrate here, or is this all safety stuff? Uh, either, both. Both. Yeah. both. Yeah. This is our new baby. This is the oh, this is a Ari scanner. Scanner, yeah. This is a flying spot scanner. It's, yeah, it's, um, it does pretty much everything, I think. So it does 2K and 4K. And this is what we're using for doing the Hitchcock films. So Hitchcock's Blackmail, which you may know, um, made in 1929, both as a silent film and a sound film. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we've been able to go back to the original uh, nitrate and it looks spectacular. Uh, and that's again a combination of dry scanning and wet scanning. And we have um, several holding vaults for holding nitrate film because um, you've got uh, so these have got these are all in individual cells with thick concrete walls steel doors uh, blowout roofs there are drench tanks up here of water for cooling down not for putting out and they are only of a certain dimension so that if one does go Protect the rest. It'll protect the rest. Yeah. It's never happened here. We've never had a nitrate fire, so which is great. Yeah.
This is, this is a relatively clean vault because what you've got here are um, films that uh, you can see here, this is a, a section of Hitchcock's 1927 film Downhill. Yeah. That's a good example. What you've got here is um, a vault of stuff that's coming into the archive. So this is stuff that's arrived. You can see it's arrived in metal barrels. Um, that's just come in, I think, from Austria. That's from UCLA. Titanic. Have we seen that? It's a newsreel about Titanic, which we just came across the other day in the collection, which is quite exciting. I remember you had uh, George Willeman showing you a, a tinted nitrate, so right. that's, a, that's a good example. A good example. More biscuit tins. Toffee, toffee tin. This is a typical thing you get with these little fragments. Um, often, yeah, you get this from um, a projectionist collection. Trims. They're tiny little trims of things and they can be all sorts of things. Oh my god, look at that. This is a, a child's cartoon. toy cartoon. Um, it's from a toy projector and that's a little drawn animation. The beautiful things, a gorgeous, gorgeous colour. I've seen these before. Um, most of the nitrate is kept in our new vaults out further out into the countryside at uh, Gaydon, uh, where we've got new purpose built, built sub zero vaults. So they're kept at minus four, minus five. Oh, really? um, and they have all the proper construction for nitrate vaults with blowout chambers and, you know, proper, mm -hmm. very over specified <laughs> concrete walls and what have you. So it's a bit of a, a marvel, actually, and, and very green as well. Every film archive, of course, has its kind of manuscript collection, paperwork, um, still images, press books, all the paraphernalia of the film. And then we have several bays of um, early film uh, books, periodicals. If you look here, you can see we've got early books to do with um, optical, the science of optics and various things of that type. Um, there are so all sorts of things that to do with pre-cinema and cinema related stuff. Yeah, this is the other main, um, this is the other main journal, the trade bicycle. journal. Yeah, the so you all know this, I'm sure, quite well, um, an absolutely essential guide to what was going on from day to day. You can see these have been very well used. There's Florence Labadee. Yeah. Another Thanhauser star. King Rene's daughter, there's that there we one. Go. A there we right. go. Isn't that lovely? Yeah, so we have that one. We have that film. So thanks for your visit to the archive. Um, if you need to know anything more about the BFI, you can go to www.bfi.org.uk. Thanks for coming. <laughs>